A short history lesson. The fuel cell, which may be an abundant source of power before long, was demonstrated by its inventor, Mr. Francis Bacon, at Cambridge. Cars, lorries, ships, all may be driven by this energy in the next decade. Sterling work, Mr. Bacon. That fuel cell contraption certainly does look promising. But steady on there. What's all this? Power. Power in the turbo generator to light the windows of the world and turn the wheels of industry. Power on which the 20th century has been built. Power to speed you in safety and comfort across the seven seas. Power in the turbine to conquer the oceans of the world. And we all know where that led. Fifty years on, and we're looking at a very different planet. As the population catapults towards seven billion, our huge energy demands show no sign of slowing. We know the clock is ticking, and everyone's looking for an answer. But what happened to the fuel cell? Our model is operative. I'll connect the circuit here, and you can see that the fuel cell is taking the hydrogen from this bulb, taking oxygen from the air, and converting it into electricity. As you can see, the fuel cell had also caught on on the other side of the Atlantic. In fact, it really took off a few years later when it was used to power the U.S. space program. However, the fuel cell was at that time deemed too heavy and too expensive and so drifted off into obscurity. Or did it? In a quiet corner of England, down a winding country lane, on a disused airfield, a group of scientists are changing all that. Welcome to AFC Energy. The, um, the alkaline fuel cell can produce um, really clean electricity, i.e. You know, no carbon dioxide or sulphur dioxide emissions because it uses really clean hydrogen to start with. So what we do is we use really clean hydrogen sources and then convert that directly into electricity, a really high electrical efficiency, and we produce a bit of heat, which we can also use as well to further improve the efficiency, and we produce deionized water. What we're doing, I mean, at AFC, and this is what special about, I think, our alkaline fuel cell, is we're looking at large-scale industrial power applications. I believe that the, something like, I think, 1% of the world's energy goes into making chlorine, and it's an absolute massive amount, and the byproduct being very, very clean hydrogen. So what we're going to do is basically take our fuel cell systems, and as opposed to seeing that hydrogen into the atmosphere, you stick it through one of our fuel cells, and it produces electricity, which then goes into a grid, which either the company can use to reduce the cost of their chlorine process, or they can then sell it to the local grid. Waste to energy. This is where you know landfills hopefully will be a thing of the past. Increasing their technologies, gasification technologies, where you basically take rubbish, you convert it into clean hydrogen. That hydrogen will go through to one of our fuel cell systems, which can then go into the grid, which is a really, really exciting area. And then another area which is potentially well, well changing is the UCG. UCG being underground coal gasification. You've also got other types of coal gasification, but ultimately it's about clean coal. So if you take coal, 
um, you extract the hydrogen from it and then you take that hydrogen and then you feed that through one of our fuel cell systems make electricity and then that goes into the grid so whilst you're still using coal you can do it in such a way that you trap the co2 so that co2 can then go down and be pumped back into the land it enables us to kind of really you know use our coal reserves in a much 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 more not only efficient way but a clean way in which i think you know has a potential massive bearing on the planet I mean, I think it's critical that these things get developed. I mean, otherwise the future is looking pretty bleak. Even if we don't have a climate crisis, uh, there will still be an energy crisis at some point because oil, gas and eventually coal will run out. So there is uh, a need, uh, as well as a climate need, to change uh, or to transit to renewable energy resources by around mid-century. In future, when we've got a high penetration of renewable energy into the energy systems, uh, storage of energy will become uh, more of a, a, a necessity and hydrogen uh, fuel can address that storage issue. What would happen if, um, if you were in a village in Africa with no connections to a power station? What you want is to micro-generate electricity, so you, you put solar photovoltaics on your roof. You don't get light during the night out of that because the sun is no longer shining. So you need to store energy so that you can switch on lights and cookers at night and the television as well. So how do you do that? You use your solar photovoltaics to generate hydrogen while you're not using the solar photovoltaics and then hydrogen plus the alkaline fuel cell at night to generate electricity. I mean, the bottom line is, is that, you know, we will use hydrogen. The fuel cell is the most efficient way to convert hydrogen into electricity. The fuel cell and the, uh, the uh, hydrogen delivery infrastructure can be used in a transition from coal and gas hydrogen to renewable hydrogen. Uh, and therefore, over decades, it would facilitate um, the, the low cost uh, switch over to uh, a, re a predominantly renewably generated uh, global energy system. This challenge to me is the most wonderful technology, innovation, wealth creation possibility. So when people say to me, what is it going to cost to meet the challenge of defossilizing our economy? I'm saying it's not going to cost anything. It's going to create wealth out of these new opportunities. The fuel cell is, I think, I believe, an absolute necessity. Um, I believe once you couple that with the clean coal technology as well, I mean, I think that it's, as a transitional technology, um, it's, you know, the potentials it's going to offer society are you know, truly immense, you know, world changing, changes everything.